I'm like, I'm like, why do I look so dark? I'm like trying to change all the settings on the thing and my light, the light that's here wasn't even on. I didn't want to, I didn't want to say the obvious. Uh, it's like when you're wearing your glasses on your head and you're like, where are my glasses? Where are my sunglasses? <laughs> uh, yeah. How it goes. All right, right everybody. everybody. What's up? How are you doing? I see you guys are popping in here. Uh, feel free to say hello in the chat box if you actually want. There you go. Make sure they have that link where they can yeah. get their names. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. So, so I'll drop a uh, in the group here. There's a URL there. Hopefully it takes. Um, and if you click on that, it can uh, add your name to the chat box so we don't just see Facebook user because it's a closed group here. So Facebook can't actually grab your name from inside the group. Um, and then I'd love to start with today of just like um, like creating uh, personal intentions of why we're here. So if you're like brand, brand new to our group, um, we're not going to spend a lot of time doing any introductions on who Elon and I are and what the group is about. You have the welcome post and the follow-up emails to kind of take you through all the resources that are here for you. And I really just want to get to, to content so you guys get as much value from this training as possible. So if your question is, who are these two and why are they staying in front of me, saying the things that they're saying, again, you got a welcome post and check your emails when you join the group. And they'll take you through uh, the tr early training that we recommend in the group, the meditations, and some of the practices that we uh, that we are, are the central focus of what we do here. Um, we teach what we call the awareness method, and it's a, a holistic approach to transformation, growth, and healing. And with that, um, I thought it'd be really good for everyone that gets on here, and you could put it in the chat box. It's like just keeping something in the background as a context. Okay, so here's what that means is uh, I'm sure you've all heard uh, intentions right now. A lot of times we say intentions audibly. And I want to say what's important is that like your field, your energetic field actually holds an intention in it all the time. Okay, for a lot of us, that intention is is pain and sacrifice, um, tumultuousness, survival. And that it's not like you chose to have that, but there's like an energetic makeup to you, like an energetic body, and it holds a specific intention. And it is that energetic makeup. It is that intention that actually is uh, in co-regulation and co-relationship with the field. And, and it has a lot to do with why your reality looks the way it does, why your relationships look the way it does, right? And so a lot of us don't wake up into our, our day choosing intention. We kind of like wake up into a specific intention that we've always had. And so part of our intention, to keep using the word here, um, is to bring you on to these trainings to help you shift that, right? Like how do we consciously bring awareness to not just our, our um, condition mechanism, which is like our mindset and things like that, but how do we get into the deeper underlayers that you really can't gain access to through the mind? And so one of the things that we always wanna do is we wanna bring attention to our intentions. And even when you're here on this training, it's like, why are you here? Like, what's your intention? If it's just here to listen and get good information, that's fine. But we are, we would actually offer that's a really low um, level, not like a bad level, but like a low level of what you can extract from being on these trainings. Okay. And so um, usually people are around our environment because they want help, a breakthrough, or they want to upgrade in one area of their life. And it's usually something along health wealth or relationships. So what I'd love to just invite you guys to do is to just take a kind of a moment and reflect on what's going on in your life right now. And like, what could use your awareness? What could use your attention and your intention right now? Okay. This doesn't have to mean that something is wrong in this area. It can mean like you're doing really well in business, but you know, there's room for improvement. You want to do better. Your relationships are great, but you know, they, there's like a, maybe there's one or two where the richness isn't there and the depth isn't there. 
And so uh, in the chat box, if you don't mind, just go ahead and write like, what's the area of life you want to focus on? And whether you want to share that intention or not is fine. You can share it inside, you know, like in your own awareness, or you could share it to the group, just to kind of get a dialogue going. And, and my request here is, is, as you're listening to this training, is that you look, you look at this training at what we share here with you guys and the practices that we share here with you guys, um, and look through the lens of that intention. Okay, so it's like, hey, if I was to apply this to this area, how would that shift that? Or if I apply it, let's see what that does. And kind of what we always say is like run an experiment, just kind of have your own, your own thing. Okay. And the other thing um, that I want to kind of offer that we don't do here regularly, but is definitely more of a practice inside of our training programs is uh, creating a coherent field with everybody here. Now, I don't want to take a long time doing this, but I do want to just guide you a little bit because Again, there are endless scientific peer-reviewed studies over the last 30 years, 40 years, and anybody who's been in the energetic practices know this, knows this to a fault. The, the intention, the quality of the energy that a group brings forward together will change dramatically what content can come through. And so the, the, the more connection that we establish as a community here, even on these live trainings, even with the people who are watching this on replay later, still get to be part of this exercise. Um, if we all just take a moment, you take a deep breath. And the breath is for two reasons. Number one, when we breathe deeply, it's, you don't breathe deeply when you don't feel safe. So we want to bring safety into the system. So a deep breath, uh, it tells your biology, I'm safe. And when we're safe, a lot more can happen in the system for transformation, growth, and healing. Not, nothing happens in the system in terms of healing at all until the body is relaxed and safe. That's why meditation is so key. Okay. So again, taking a deep breath, telling our biology that we're safe right now. And then somehow, some way, just bringing some, some gentle, very gentle, soft awareness towards your heart space. We're very much up here. Most of our lives, you're probably listening to this content from up here. So it's fine if some of it is up here and there's a little chattering box that keeps going. Just, just an invitation, though, for as a community to find the heart space together. Again, continuing to do that breath. And also recognizing that you are listening to this as a community. And there's other people here. Other people who will listen to this for potentially weeks or months out from now as well. And so just becoming, um, again, somehow, some way with your awareness, becoming conscious of the greater whole that are participating in this particular teaching and whatever teaching comes through me and Elon today in terms of the topic that was picked. So just becoming aware of everybody in that field. And this is, we're also doing this through our heart space, just noticing through the heart space that there is a collective heart that we can connect to also. Nice. Nice. And see if you can notice the subtle shifts that dropping your awareness from your mind to your heart space, even if you find there's some toggling happening, like you're up here, then you're down here, uh, noticing the heart space. You don't have to like hold it like it's some hard job. You actually want to drop the effort from this. You want to let go of any effort that you might be putting into this and just noticing it's more of just uh, orientation of your awareness. Cool. And just so kind of creating that cohesive field. Okay. So, um, the topic that Elon and I kind of came through for us is really talking about this, uh, like the mental imprisonment of the mind. And I shared about uh, about this on the Telegram channel a little bit as well. Elon's got some uh, some cool stories to share. Then we'll go into a little bit more training. But I wanted to just give you guys context because part of this is like you taking responsibility. And part of it is also recognizing that you didn't do this to yourself. Like whatever it is that you're in, whatever situation that you're in, um, much of what we are, probably all of what we are is, is based on conditioning, right? Like humans are habitual conditioned, um, beings. And we're also, there's so much more to us, but for most people, they're living this, this kind of like fractional reality that has been conditioned. And so, um, you know, part of what's created this prison in our mind is that we are living in an experience for most of us, again, that the way that we experience the five world, uh, the, the reality and the way that we test our reality is through our five senses. And it doesn't seem to be much beyond that. And we're here to kind of peel back the layer and let you know that there is actually a whole lot more going on than just what your five senses can explore. And now our five senses have been conditioned, right? From the moment you pretty much 
went to school or even with your parents at home, because this is what was done to them, which is why it's not their fault, whatever you grew up inside of, that's what they learned. And usually what parents did to us or didn't do to us or how they showed up or didn't show up is a muddled down and watered down version of what was done to them, right? Because usually we kind of like evolve slowly and we're like, oh, that wasn't so good. I, maybe I shouldn't hit my kids or maybe I shouldn't speak to my children this way. Like that, you know, that's, that's part of the evolution of what we are. But what we find is because almost all of us have been through traditional school systems, schooling is kind of based around, okay, you know, like a, a government or some kind of authority figure has shaped and said to you, here's what history is. They've told that to the teacher. They tell them that's a curriculum. And then the teacher says, here's what happened. And then ask the, the kids to tell you, okay, and like, tell me what happened. And if the kid, the child, right, it's, it's, it's like kind of a sensitive child, doesn't reflect back those exact words to the teacher, then the child gets a bad grade. The bad grades to le leads to this feeling of being incompetent, which feels like a, a loss of connection with the teacher. And then perhaps the parents are upset at the child for not getting a good grade and now a loss of connection with the parent and a loss of connection from, from an adult as a child who's supposed to be your protector and your safety mechanism uh, actually triggers these feelings, right? These like subtle energies inside of our body of not feeling safe. We don't feel safe. Then it starts kind of working on these parts inside of ourselves. I feel like if I'm not safe, then I might die. It can go like that deep into the system. And so we see this, if you guys just look around the world, if you look on social media, if you look on how people are responding to COVID and vaccines, not taking any side here on any issues, I'm just more looking at the macro, the meta, is like, this is what's at play, is this relationship between the, the submissive person to an authority figure. And we see again, at every hierarchy level in corporations, we see this, when you have a boss, we see this, when we have parents, we see this, with teachers, we see this, with government, we see this, right? So I just want to kind of like say to you that like the system is built a bit around creating these conditionings that create these imprisonments. And so again, like part of it is what happened to you and part of it is really not your fault. It's just been this, this dialogue that has been passed down for generation, thousands of years of generations now. And that's what we're up against. We're learning how do we feel underneath the surface of all that, recognizing that perhaps we will not get out of that conditioning through more conditioning. <laughs> like we can't layer on more conditioning on top of the conditioning we have, hoping that, oh, if I just add on more conditioning, I'm going to get out of this. In fact, it's, oh, a, it's not sure, a learning. We sure as heck try. We sure as heck try, right? By, by adding more books and, and classes and things like this. We're, we're actually pointing at an unlearning here, not a learning. We, we actually want to unlearn some of the things that we've learned. And again, we can't necessarily do that through the mind. So I wanted to kind of... Um, start with that as a context today. Um, I think Elon had some some stories and stuff he wanted to share and then we'll kind of see where that goes, yeah? Yeah. Um, this, this whole conversation kind of came about, I was um, meditating on the beach the, the other day and so today is actually uh, the Jewish New Year. Um, so for all my fellow Jews out there, Le Shana Tova. Um, and I was, uh, meditating and I probably just thinking about like the new year and, and the energy around it. And there's just a beautiful opportunity, uh, to create newly. And so for those of you that know or don't know, I've obviously just moved to Florida. So all of this is, is very new to me and I'm still in this, like, dream pinch me state of like, you know, am I going to wake up and someone's going to tell me like, you got to get on the flight and go back home or whatever it is. Uh, but it's all feeling like very vacationy. And so yesterday we even sat here. So after the meditation, like one of the things that became very clear, I, how many of you guys, when you meditate, you, uh, your focus is on trying to quiet your mind. And then when the mind isn't quiet, there's like a little bit of upset and frustration of like, oh, stop. And then you like start, you know, like shut off the noise or shut off the thinking and you bring it back, right? It's like a very, uh, a practice that a lot of people do. And so after meditating f daily for years and years and years, I've gotten to this point where I can now watch the part 
that is always trying to figure stuff out. So I don't know if like, you know, when you meditate, maybe it's like trying to plan out your day or trying to figure out this situation or whatever it is. And so now I just get to like watch it. And it's cool because I'm not in it. I'm literally just watching it. So as I'm watching it, um, I just turned 40 this year. We moved to this new place. And for whatever reason, this, this new year um, feels very different than any other new year that I've experienced or one that I can remember in a very, very, very long time. Because it's like everything is new. And I was saying yesterday at uh, Rosh Hashanah dinner to, to my uh, family that when we left New York, it almost felt like it wasn't like we started a new chapter. It's like we, we closed a whole book. So it was like 13 and a half years of this book that it felt like was complete. And we put it up on the shelf and we're like, all right. And then we left the house and it just felt like that was starting to write a new book. And so I'm, I'm meditating and I have this part that I'm watching, trying to figure this whole thing out. And I have this message come clearly through and it says, um, you don't have to figure anything out. I was like, hmm, interesting. You don't have to figure anything out. And I can tell you that just from my personal experience over the last year or two has really been a shift into or a shift out of the figuring it out because that's one of my strong suits is like just figure shit out make things happen figure shit out make things happen it's like what's been running the show and what i realized yesterday is like that's what wrote that book for the last 13 and a half years and as i transition into this whole new arena my curiosity and what I really, really want to uh, get practice more and more of is the next book that I write, I don't want to write from that habit. And I don't want to write from that paradigm of constantly doing, constantly making shit happen. Because look, I know I can do it. I have tons of proof. There's no doubt, right? Like, and what I'm exploring, I know what Guy's been exploring, is this ability to surrender and to let go and to trust in the divine, in the energy, in God, in the universe, whatever the, you know, sings to you. And the more that I've done that, the more my life has turned around into this state of like a dreamlike state. You know, the, the, everything that's happened that that's brought me here today uh, is also, you, you moved the screen. Yeah, I was trying to flip you to the big one. Um, everything that's happened that got me here today, like I had one of our uh, friends say to me the other day, she's like, oh my God, you're so lucky that you moved to Florida. Like, did you move because you knew all this stuff was gonna happen in New York? And I was like, how the fuck would I have known what was going to happen in New York or is happening, you know, all over the world? Like my human mind with all of the information and all this stuff that I have, there's no way that it was going to be able to like predict what's happening. But something when I walked into the development where we're building a house, something was like, it was a very loud. It was like here now. Mm hmm. And as crazy as that sounds to maybe some of you, it's like, I have just learned to trust that inner part of me. I don't question it anymore. Like there's no need to question it. I might not understand it. It might not make sense to me. It might scare the fuck out of me. Like all that could be there. And I still listen to the voice. My, my practice is now listen to that Verse trying to figure it out because if I had to map out how to move my family from New York to here in a span of four and a half months, there's no amount of figuring it out that would have happened. I would have tried to figure it out and talked myself three steps 
talked myself out of it three steps into it because it just would have been too hard. Too many variables, too many things, this and that. And the way this whole thing has flowed from putting to finding the place and putting the deposit to my wife, who is a New York City attorney, being allowed to work from home from here, uh, to my kids transitioning into schools beautifully, to like selling our house with ease, to like literally every step of the way, just being guided and guided and guided. I just said to one of our uh, clients, she just messaged me today, that like a miracle that someone basically is funding her to be in one of our programs. And I was like, I say this all the time, like all you have to do is listen to the deeper inner part of you and say yes. That's it. Most of you are out there trying to figure out more and more and more complicated ways to solve your life issues because the simple one didn't work. So it's got to be more complicated. And then the complicated one doesn't work. So it's like, oh, it's got to be more complicated. And you end up running from more complicated to more and more complicated to more complicated. You get exhausted and nothing works. It's scary as hell to let go and surrender. It really is. I'm not taking anything away from that. It really, really is. Yeah, it's like the the easiest and the hardest thing. Yeah, like to, and I, to I, so sorry, and I, and I really want to bolster Elon's credentials here on this because it's not just like a passe. Like he was not, you know, for example. Um, Elon was looking for a place to move for a number of years. I, I've been trying to convince him to move out to California for about 10 years now. And, and him and his wife were going, they were about to go to Europe or they wanted to maybe do a, a trip to the Northwest. And I said, Elon, you know, like you've, you've been to Europe many times. I'm like, go do like a nature trip. I'm like go really explore the Pacific Northwest. They drove basically up the coast, which is beautiful. in like Oregon, Washington area here in the States is absolutely stunningly beautiful. And he comes back home and he says, you know what? That was all really beautiful. I've been looking for a place to live. But I kind of re realized after this trip, he goes, I love where I am. I love our life. He goes, I'm kind of planting my flag here. And, and, and for him, planting his flag was they had been putting off um, redoing their kitchen at their house. Because we're doing anything at the house, yeah, I didn't want to invest in the house, but I knew it was going to leave. Yeah, they weren't sure if they wanted to make that like that further commitment to the home. They'd been there for like 13 years, but it was like, hey, if we leave in the next year or two, what's the point, right? So Elon's like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna redo my kitchen, which is like a big planting my flag here for you know the foreseeable future. And I said fame, and I told him I'm like famous last words, but I, and I was kind of joking, but it's kind of what I've seen. It's like when somebody becomes so sure of something, that's when reality's like, haha, you know, like let me show you. And, and I shit you not, it was maybe like, a, you know, COVID hit, their kitchen was in the kind of shambles. By the time they got it done to the time they went to Florida and just were trying to like get out of New York for a few months to hang out with, with our parents in a different environment, uh, my wife and I get there. And the first day that we get there to visit, Elon and his wife are going to go house shopping. Now, they're not even taking it seriously. They're just like, hey, you know, like window shopping. And, and it was on that day, basically, that they came back and started realizing that, the, that there might be this change here. And so within, you know, like a week, they kind of decided maybe. And with like a week later, they're like, all right, we're going to do it. But that's what I want. The, the reason I want to say credentials is like, that's not where he was thinking that life was going. But something oh. came and moved him. Right. Like how many of you guys have ever been talking to somebody or you've been on this training and you get this feeling, you hear something that gets shared here and you get this feeling and it moves you on the inside. Like you have an emotional response. Like, you know, everyone always gets excited when they get goosebumps. That's by the way, I really want to put your awareness on like goosebumps or like when you get those surges of energy in the body that are very pleasant to me, people don't give enough um, awareness to that. That is a full body. Yes. That's when your body's like, yes, that. That's what, that's what it's trying to tell you. And, and I have, uh, I have done, uh, long-term meditations where you do like 10, 10 day silent meditations. And I could tell you, you gain some, what ends up happening there for me, what happened was I got such awareness and sensitivity over the energy of my body that at will I was moving energy in my body. And, and I remember it hit me really strong when I was doing that because I would move energy down my body and I would see my hairs stand up on end. So if you think like what's when you get those goosebumps and you see everything standing up on end, 
what's the only other time that you see that happen is when you run electricity close to your body, right? And so I was like, oh my God, that's the electrical input output of my body that now I'm conscious of. And my awareness is moving that in my body. And I can literally see as the wave would come, my, my hair would stand up on end. So when you're having an experience that's moving you, you could say that something, your body is relaxing in such a way that energy is moving very rapidly in the body. And it causes that really beautiful sensation that I'm even having now as I name it. <laughs> you know, so I just want to kind of like point to that, that when you guys are like, you, you hear something and you're like, yeah. And then you get that experience, something in you is trying to speak to you, like give you guidance. And, and that's how it is. We're all being guided. And a lot of us, because we are so locked into the conditioning of what reality is, who we're supposed to be, the role we're supposed to play, the careers we're supposed to have, the parents we're supposed to be, the you know, fill in the blank, we miss the cues. And so unless we start doing some work to relax these systems, then we can keep missing the cues. Or we only get a few of them versus seeing that it's constantly happening, constantly trying to guide you and constantly trying to bring you to a really much more enhanced life than you've ever experienced. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's like, what would it take? Because I know you hear this and just tell me if this resonates just in the comment box. Like if you're, if you're kind of picking up and tracking this, like this idea of letting go of the the doing the figuring it all out and you might really be stuck in there like so i acknowledge that and just realizing like oh there's this other place that i really want to play right like i really want to play in that area of allowing right so let me know in just the chat box if that's that's something that you resonate with what naturally like leads you and i can share with you dozens upon dozens of stories of how this is just shown up time and time and time again in all of our lives. Um, the ultimate question though, right? If, if like you're of the camp of, I wanna be there, right? Like I wanna really truly experience life from that place of trust and faith and surrender and letting go and not have to figure it out every step of the way. The next question is always gonna be, well, how do I do that? And even the part that's asking the how do I do that? That's still the part that's trying to figure it out and do it. But now you're telling it like, oh, well, instead of figuring out all this other stuff, why don't you figure out how to do that, right? It's like the, you're using the same mechanism. And this is why I said like, it's the simplest and also one of the most difficult things is because it always comes back to me for the idea of support and like truly feeling support not the notion of not the concept of not the like oh i know i'm supported i mean like actually feeling support and the more that we've been able to through our practices bring support into our system like more safety gets stabilized as more support is being held there and it feels like i'm going to try to transmit this so like if you're sitting right now see if you can like let go into being held by your seat or at the very or at the very least notice that you are sitting on something and that there is that something is supporting your body weight. And then as you like do this practice, see if you can notice that there's certain parts that you're still holding. And then let go of those two. And see if you can notice that it's like, it's not just the chair or the sofa, that there's an actual energetic hand, like the hand of God that is holding you, has always been holding you, has always been there. 
doesn't discriminate about your age, your color, your sex, your gender, how shitty you were today. It doesn't care. Just always there. And allowing yourself to just feel and lean back into that. And you might notice as you do that, that certain parts of your body that you always kind of hold really tight, maybe it's around your neck or your lower back, or maybe your shoulder. Notice how you can let those go too. And just fully lean back into that support. Having support and knowing that it's always going to be there for you is what allows you to be really brave mm. and bold and make life altering decisions with an ease that other people look at, like they, they, they just cannot comprehend. And it doesn't come from a place like of, I'm just smarter, so I figured out all the steps. On the contrary, being able to make bold moves like that, it's like you've given up that you will ever know what the 12th step is. Mm -hmm. All that you've trusted is that I fully trust in this energy that is wanting to move me because I know it's always there with me guiding me, supporting me. And as long as I move as a yes through life, knowing that the next step will always show itself to me in its time, not in the time that my mind wants, not in the time, just in its time. And the most, like, Whatever you can plan and structure and figure out for your life is still, just, just let this sink in, is still being built by the same material that you currently have in your life, right? Like you can take apart the brick by brick house and you can reformat it but the bricks aren't gonna turn to steel or gold or whatever the heck it is. You're just moving the same parts around. But when you let go of all of it, you get to build whatever that thing is next in all new material with things that you can't even, can't even see or comprehend because they're just not, in the five senses that you're used to creating your 3D world. And that's the shit that takes your breath away. It's the stuff that like you walk through life, you're like, how is this happening? Hmm. So I wanna explore something here because you, you had mentioned something. So like how many of you guys, um, have followed some intuitive hit and then you're like, Whoa, this is amazing. And then a short period after that, something goes awry and there is like a element of disappointment that arrives. How many of you guys can relate to that experience? And so what I want to talk about here, what Elon kind of brought up is like, you know, this, uh, it, it, like I said, surrender is the, the, the easiest thing to do and the hardest thing to do, because in practice, it's really simple. But letting go, trusting that you will be held or that, you know, something's going to come along and, and help um, some circumstance in person really take something like how many of you guys have really, really this is something we used to ask all the time. It's like you've been in a really shitty situation. And so it's just like you're like plummeting to earth, right? Like it just feels like you just nosedived off a building, but like right before you hit the ground, something unexpected happens. And it almost feels as if like the hands of grace are kind of like scooping you up. And and like, if any, if you guys have had this experience, just say I in the chat box, because I want everyone to see in our experience asking 
thousands of people that question. I think everyone has always raised their hand. I, I can't say definitively everyone, but like almost everyone. And I want I want people to see that that's a universal experience. It's like when the going gets its toughest, suddenly, as if by magic itself, something happens. And so we want to kind of explore this phenomenon of something coming out of the blue to help. Because really what ends up happening when you've tried everything, when you've done all the things, you've listened to all the opinions, here's how you fix this, here's how you do this, here's how you make it better, and nothing works. Because yep. st you're still taking all that information in from the same conditioned mind. And so the only thing the conditioned mind is reproduce variations of the conditioning. It literally cannot come up with something new. It is trapped in its own illusionary state. And until that illusion is popped, so to speak, right? It like disappears and you step into a new reality. Nothing, nothing exists. But right when it's the most challenging is the moment you're like, fuck it, I give up, which is you saying, I surrender. And you let go and you throw the oars. And that's the moment where you're like, all right, storm, just do what you're going to do. And something happens. This like yeah. unexpected situation happens. So I want to point to it because to a degree, we've all unconsciously done this and have taken advantage, not advantage of, but participated and co-regulated with a consciousness that's responding to you when you say, I give up. So what we're looking to do is like, how do we empower that? Because when we say escaping the prison of the mind, all we're saying is stop trying so hard. <laughs> you're, you're trying so hard from what you know. And, and there is that line, again, I shared it on Telegram, which is, uh, again, it's, it's a paraphrase of Einstein's quotes. It's like, if you ask a fish to climb a tree, the fish thinks it's, a, it's an idiot for life. And so most of us are living inside of an environment where we've never been given an opportunity to even explore, truly explore our passions, the things that we naturally gravitate towards. For me and Elon, it's this kind of work, right? Like this is, this is this, if you guys come here and they're like, wow, these guys really know their stuff or they're genius in this space. Thank you for that, first of all. The second of all, it's it's because we are naturally inclined and pulled in this direction. We feel the same way about our, our health and fitness. It's like, so those things are seem like easy to us, but it's because we we naturally invest our time in them and we've kind of learned these skills and practices to the degree where it's like we only do what we love. Yeah. And so it seems like we're geniuses, but like I will say this, like everybody here is a genius if they were doing what they loved. And and that's your gift to humanity. That's what you bring through. That's the genius you bring through. However, we've had structures that have not allowed us to, uh, for a long time, but that's changing now and has changed for a long time now, have not allowed us to monetize or get an exchange of value in the world for those skills. But that that time is over. Like That's what we're stepping into fully. And as most of society automates and, and makes jobs in obsolescence, the only thing we're going to have space for and give value back to society is our zone of genius, which is amazing and should give you hope for the future of what we can become. But Elon said something really important there. He's like, you know, you, you, you'll step into something, you'll feel this thing and you'll say, you know what, this time I'm going to participate. And then something magical happens. Then you're, you go back into your conditioning and you go, why isn't it happening faster? Yeah. And Elon, Elon kind of said, this is the, this is how it works. It's like, it has its own timing. I also want to say this, your healing has its own timing. Yeah. Your body has its own timing. The mind works at a different clock because the mind sees things as linear, progressive, step one, step two, step three, here's how we get there. And so it seems like I have to do something to get there. But again, we now know that time and space don't even exist, right? This quantum physics 101 now, like it should be hopefully well-versed for people. And so like if we're living outside of time, then if this is obsessed with it, then you can see why so much upset gets lived on as we continue to just lo like localize our awareness here. But you're not here. This is not who you are. You are not what's inside this mind. You are the awareness that's connecting to this mind, but you are not this mind. And so what I want to point to is, is the gap. What happens in the gap? Because that gap is really important because you're going to follow the intuition then there's going to be a gap. Yep. And then this other amazing synchronistic magical thing is, is waiting for you over here. But in this timeline, right, in the mind's timeline between here and here, the mind's like, oh, shit, 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 freaking out, running its programs, and in fact, slowing this process down of what's actually happening here. Because every time you intervene, every time you interject, every time you try to manage, 
what have you done? You've taken yourself out of that quotient of surrender, so to speak. So what we do with this time in this gap is crucial to how often we experience miracle after miracle after miracle or synchro. And, and by miracle, I mean like synchronicity or magic or like a sudden, you know, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Not phenomenon. Um, uh, What's that movie? Uh, serendipitous act, like something serendipitous happens in your life, right? So that's where Elon and I really, like now that I'm thinking about it, that's where we focus. How do we practice and notice what's happening between this time and that time? Because what's inevitably, inevitably going to come up and totally natural is all your fear. Yep. That you're inadequate, that you're doing it wrong, that this doesn't work, that they were right, that I should just follow the herd, even though the herd is really fucking unhappy and scared most of the time, right? Like all these different kinds of things. And so we really want to look at what do we do between that time? And so look, again, we offer you guys in this group, uh, meditations, and these are not, I'm telling you right now, the meditations that we offer here in this group, these are not meditations of like, Hey, go quiet your mind. That's cute. We welcome you quieting your mind, but that that's not what we're about here. We are like, I'm telling you what we really care about is, is you cultivating an experience, a direct experience inside your body of safety and well-being. Now, if some of you guys are like, I don't even know what the fuck that means because you, you haven't felt safe and you don't know what well-being is. You think, I just want more money. I just want better relationships. I just want health. And I, I, I'm going to ask you to look deeper than those initial desires because that's what your mind thinks it needs to solve this problem. Mm -hmm. And what's underneath it and why it never changes is because you don't have safety and you don't have well-being. When you don't feel safe in your relationships, even if it's at the subtle level, they're not going to get better. You guys yep. get that? They're always going to show up and perpetrate you or violate you in some way or however it shows up in your relationship, right? Like there's a lot of dynamics there. If you don't feel safe and well in your system, then taking risks in your business, you're never going to do it. And, and nothing happens in business without you taking some sort of risk and trusting that it's going to work out. And even when it doesn't work out, like financially doesn't work out, that doesn't mean it didn't work out, by the way. It means that you're now learning something that was crucial for the next step. And so when you always measure things the way that the mind measure things is it's success if I have money, it's not success if I have, don't, have, don't have money. And I'm telling you, we fall into this trap just like everybody else. The difference is what do we do at that time when that fear arises in order to enhance our experience of safety and well-being, and also, and as we do that and bring more safety, well-being into our system, what we find is is that the gaps become much shorter. Yep. The, the synchronistic stuff starts happening a lot more often. Okay, same thing for your health. If you don't have a positive body image, right? Like that's what the mind's going to say. Oh, I don't have a positive body image. Let me tell myself I'm beautiful six thousand times a day. Okay, great. You do that. But every time you tell yourself you're beautiful, what's really happening is you collapse in on yourself because there's a part of you that does not believe that. No safety, no well-being for that part. Not going to change your habits. Not going to change your thoughts. Okay. And this is where most people operate. They're like, oh, I just got to tell myself something different. Yeah, that works when there's, a, when there's alignment all the way through. Yeah. And your word really has impact. When you feel it here and you say it, it's like that train has left the building. It's, it's on a maglev 500 mile per hour train. You are going to start seeing things in your life shift very quickly. But when you're trying to play the convincing game inside your own system, You've all done it. You know how it goes. You can't lie to your own biomechanism suit. Like it, it, yeah. it doesn't work that way. This, you, you can lie to everybody on the planet. You can't lie to here. You can lie to everybody. You can create all the identities that you want, all the ego trauma that you want. You can do all that stuff. Make people believe that you're amazing. Da, 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 da. Inside, it's going to be like, don't know what you're talking about. So what we really want to focus on is that gap space. Is there anything you wanted to, to add on that? Anything that came through for you? Um, there was, and then I forgot. So go ahead. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. We kind of, Elon and I like to think of things in like three levels. First, it's like, first, let's get your mind right. Okay. Like understand how this mechanism works. Because if you don't, it's always going to take advantage of you. It's, it's a smart chess player, right? If, if I sat down with a chess player, I don't know chess well, but I know the, like the basics, he's going to run the table on me every fucking time. I better, I better have some awareness of what's happening on that table beyond just like 
the positions that the pawns and, and the rooks and stuff can move around in, right? Like, I need to understand how the game is played. If I understand how the game is played, greater awareness, I can bring a, a better strategy to what happens when I'm losing in, in, in that game, right? So same thing in life. It's like, if you don't understand how this works, it's you're, it's kind of a tough battle. And it, and it and it makes everything else harder because even if you move into some of the greater practices, energetic stuff, integration becomes difficult because the mind runs away. And then so you have an amazing opening experience, transformative, and then the mind comes back in with all its conditioning and it just pulls you out of that state. Okay, so the mind, mind is really, really important. After that is like, is really starting to do some of the energetic work. Now we call our programs emotional intelligence uh, programs because that's the the known vernacular in the space. But if we really could call it what we wanted to call it, it's just, it's energy, it's energy practices. It's energy and awareness practices. These are very ancient, proven, fantastic practices, right? And they're life altering. So you'll hear a lot of people say like, you gotta, you gotta feel it to heal it. Okay, how many of you guys have ever heard like, you gotta feel it to heal it. And that's what a lot of people think of when they think of emotional intelligence. And in a way, they're right. And in a way, they're not, okay? So here's what I mean by that. Yes, you got to feel to heal it. But how many of you guys have been in a really like down, depressed type of mood and like feeling those emotions? You're not like, okay, I feel better now. <laughs> now that I've felt my depression, like everything yeah. is great. You know, it, it doesn't work that way. It's just like sometimes when you feel your sadness, you go deeper into the sadness. Sometimes when you feel your rage, you find yourself even more enraged. Like it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't fix it. And so that could be confusing to people when they're like, feel it to heal it. You're like, motherfucker, I'm feeling this shit all I'm the time. I'm trying not to feel it. Yeah, I'm trying not to feel. It's too much feeling, right? So like, fuck you and your training and get the hell away from me. And so that's kind of what we want to point to is like that, th that aspect of it may not be right. And for a lot of talk therapy and these kind of therapies where they're like, go into the experience and you're like going into it. And then like at the end, you actually feel more traumatized. Chances are you probably are. And why that is, is because almost every practice that Elon and I have ever found, while it might be a really good practice, and the fundamentals of it are really, really strong in terms of how human development works, what they, what they don't bring into it is awareness and energy. Okay, so here's what I mean by that. When you feel an emotion, but the mind is still hooked in into its conditioning, then what's watching the experience is the conditioning that's creating the experience. Okay. So what's watching the experience is the conditioned mind that's watching what's happening down here. Oh, I'm having this emotion. And when you say I'm like, I'm angry, I'm sad, I'm this, I'm that. This is going to be maybe controversial, but you're actually not accurate in what you're saying. Now in your experience, it's accurate, but what you're really getting is a, it's a judgment that the the conditioning that was given to you is having about this experience. Maybe when you were sad in your family, that was like apprehensible. Like you don't get to be sad in our family. Maybe in your family, you weren't able to get angry or maybe like no one smiled all the time. And so you might have conditioning that says, Hey, boys don't cry. Girls don't complain. And so when there is a complaint that comes up, there's also a judgment that comes in. And so how are you going to feel what's actually happening when what's assessing what's happening is conditioning? Okay, so it's like you're watching from here. So that's not feeling it to heal it. That's just feeling it to re-traumatize. That's just that's right. looping in your own shit over and over again. So here's here's what changes everything is when when we even even in our intuitive mind program, which by the way, I have a gift for you guys about that today. So if you hang on for, for a few more minutes, I'll give you a gift on that one. Okay. The first thing we teach people is you are not the mind, you are not all these things. And this is conceptual, but we take them into experience so they can experience it. So it's not concept. Okay. You are not your mind. You're not your body. You are the awareness. That's it. That's all we are. Every single one of us, we are just awareness. And together, we are collective awareness. And inside that awareness, this thing that we call reality arises based on a lot of weird quantum paradoxical phenomenon. It's fucking crazy when you start looking at it, how insane it all is, right? But it's like, that is our world. We live in an incredibly complex multi-dimensional world and guys i'm telling you the shit that's in movies is not even close to how crazy our reality is it's way crazier than that because there's so much potential that we're not tapping into and so what we want to get is until we know how to take our awareness and unhook it from our conditioned mind everything else pretty much you're going to experience is just from that conditioning
So the most crucial thing is to become aware of energy and higher states of awareness so that as you view an experience that you've had in the past that didn't make you feel safe, that didn't have well-being, that maybe frightened the shit out of you, instead of looping in it and re-engaging it and reenacting in it, it actually fully resolves. And that's what it does. When you bring your awareness out into the field and then you watch an experience, the experience just moves through the system. It really is that simple. We want, I, I wish I could tell you it's more complicated because then we'd be like, throw us a lot of money and we'll take you the five steps to heal everything. But it's get out of the conditioned mind, watch the experience from a higher state of awareness and the system takes care of everything else. So it's kind of like a two or a three step process. That's all that it takes. That's all that it takes. And so how do we find that awareness is by working with other people who've already activated that level of awareness and can transmit and mirror it to you. And if you're like, oh, you're just saying that because you want us to sign up for a program, I do want you to sign up for a program, but I'm not just saying that. Human beings work on this thing called mirror neurons. The way that we learn is we mirror each other energetically and through watching other people do things. And when your parents, when you were kids, they said they pointed at stuff that you were doing. And they're like, hey, sweetheart, you noticed when you did that? Did you notice when you do that? Did you notice when you did that? And the child eventually goes, yeah, I did notice that. And guess what? The mirror neurons learn and you're activating your learning system. That's how, that's how humans learn. And so the only way you're going to continue to learn, it's not like that changes when you're an adult. The brain doesn't find some new way to learn. It continues to learn through mirroring. That's why also when you see how authority works and how your parents dealt with authority, it's how you deal with authority because you learn mm -hmm. that through mirroring. So we're inviting you to experiences where you can mirror a new consciousness, a new way of experiencing your own consciousness, not our consciousness, your consciousness. And what we're telling you is, is that we've been doing this for years now, is that the healing and transformation and growth of people happen, that, that people want happens because this experience as a byproduct enhances people's experience of well-being and safety. And then every area of your life, health, wealth, relationships, is sourced from wellness and safety, not from a fight or flight response, which is what most people on this planet are doing. They're sourcing their reality from a fight or flight response. And so the quality of the energy that they create from is fight or flight. It's a shitty energy. It's a low vibration energy. If you want the things that you're manifesting in your life to change, then the quality of the energy behind the actions that you're taking is really what matters. And so these gaps of times that I'm pointing at are really what matter. This amazing thing happened, now nothing's happening. Fuck, 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 fuck. This amazing thing happens. But in between here is all the condition activation you have about why it won't be, the fear that I have. And so every time one of those things arises, it's not, it's not an experience of, oh my God, this isn't working. It's, this is all the conditioning I have that doesn't make this work in the first place. That I've always had. So what I want to do is I don't want to look at these things and go, what was me? I can't believe these things are happening. I want to look at, oh my God, look at this opportunity to clear that out of my system, enhance my experience of well-being and safety so that these timelines get shorter, that these experiences of synchronicity and magic, this intuitive hits, that this guidance system that we all have can start working at a really, really, really high level with us. And that's fundamentally what we do here is we help you work in these periods of gaps and then notice these systemic kind of like synchronistic things that happen when you're in a relationship with, with this really divine matrix or this divine field, right? Which is, again, I can get to all the quantum physics here if you want to, but I don't want you to snooze off. So I'm just going to say it that way. So, so guys, so here's the thing. We have our next intuitive mind event coming up September 25th and 26th. Okay. This is what we teach there. So if you're like, but how, but how, but how, but how, we can't explain it to you. You have to experience it. That's how. This is not, this is not a mental architecture. We don't want to add more conditioning. We want to show you that there's a whole other experience that you get to have. And once you have it, it just opens that door. And you don't have to ask how. It just naturally starts unfolding into your reality. We call this ontological learning. Okay, You don't have to work on it. It works on you. That's why we know that it works. Because whether you want to or not, the moment that door is opened, here it comes. Okay. So yeah, absolutely. Like someone's saying it's a, it's a blissful experience. Like it, it, it's, it will shock you because it's an experience that you kind of like intuitively know that you get to have, but it's like, no one can quite find how to have it. And so most of us are like chasing 
substances or medicines or whatever it is. Certainly I did all those things like changing our state in some way to like have some opening, some sense that it can be different than the way that it is. And we're here to tell you, it really can be different than the way that it is. Okay. So next event, it's a Saturday and Sunday. We moved it back to a two day event after much deliberation. We think it works better that way. And you can go to, uh, there you go. Intuitive mind dot live in your URL bar. There's a promo code here and I'm giving it to you guys cause you're on these trainings. So I want to, I want to, um, give you something for investing your time here with us at checkout. If you put in a hundred bucks, easy to remember, it will save you. Guess how much? It'll save you a hundred bucks on the ticket. Okay. And the tickets are honestly, they're, they're cheap to begin with for the experience that's delivered there as well. Okay. And so, so that's the game. Our invitation is come participate on these events, Saturday and Sunday, come get this training, come have the direct experience. If you have any questions, even after you go to the page, watch the testimonials. I think that's more than anything else. Like watch testimonials. I can even play you guys out with some um, at the end of this training if you want today. Watch the testimonial so you can see people's experience. Like there's like an awe effect. So more than what they're saying, which is interesting, it's like, see if you can like tune into like how they feel. You're like, whoa, this person has been through something, something that was unexpected. This, this event is unexpected. We can tell you're going to walk into it and be like, two days later, you're going to be like, I cannot believe I had no idea. It's like a whole other world was right in front of my eyes that I didn't know. And that is the reality that Elon and I believe that the whole of humanity is waking up to right now, right? That's, that's why we're going through this really intense period in our history right now is to wake people up and, and go ask people like Elon, these migrations that people are having, where people are traveling, how they're not going back to their jobs. Like notice people are like, they don't fundamentally want low vibration. Everyone's looking, what's in my alignment? And no, this area doesn't feel in alignment anymore. I'm going to move here. This job was fucking not in my alignment. I'm not going back to that. Like, and see how like this is kind of playing. Look beyond just the, con- you know, like the contemporary way of looking at things. This is this is energetic. This is a, a spiritual experience that's happening. So, if you guys again want to participate, you want to find out what this game is about. And if and if the event doesn't like knock your socks off, you know, like completely blown away, perfectly fine. Just ask for a refund. We're happy to send you the money back. We really just want. Only people who are like, they're like, damn, that was incredible. Otherwise, we, we shouldn't have your money. We should only get we should only get your money if you got a lot of value. That's it, right? So uh, that's it. And if, again, you have any questions, we have our team scouring this group all the time, looking for people to support, doing reach outs to you guys who have raised their hand that you want it. So if you do want support, you do ha- you'll have any questions at all. All you got to do is put contact in the chat box below. Or just write a post in the group and say, hey, I want some support any way that you want to do it. But if you put contact in the chat box below, then our team will uh, directly contact you, send you information and uh, go back and forth with you on any questions that you might have about this event or anything else that we do here uh, in training in our community. All right, guys. So please enjoy. I hope you had a a good time in uh, today's training. Uh, We love you very much. Thank you for being here. And uh, I will play you out with... um, some testimonials from our two day event. So you can kind of, kind of get a taste of the experiences that people had, but again, feel free to go to that uh, link, check it out and use that promo code hundred bucks to save yourself a hundred bucks for a limited time. All right, friends, we love you very much. We'll talk to you soon. Bye everybody. You put words to something that is inexplicable. How do you try to convey other than I hope the energy and the love you can feel coming through this like how amazing and cracked open I feel how after a life's journey of traumas and bliss and books and self-development and walking the Camino de Santiago which was 800 kilometers in 33 days of meditation and being connected to, to earth and interacting with other pilgrims for all over the world what an amazing experience that was that changed me but I can't tell you how much more two days um, with all these beautiful souls online in this event, how much more that even cracked me open, how, how that did crack me open, uh, finally cracked me open. The deep seated feelings of well being, of connection, those aha moments, going into this with no expectations, with my heart open, uh, it's, it's life altering. Um, I sort of equate it to being when you first fall in love with someone and how 
blissful that is and everything's great and wonderful and that you know it's the honeymoon period but this is not that this is the honeymoon period with yourself which is never going to end i cannot stress enough how much this is actually easy as they had said um come if you're called come if you're engaged my experience i can tell you is not atypical it's extremely typical for those that open up and feel this connection together can you do things on your own absolutely can you do thing one on one with coaches fabulously can you i get chills saying this can you grow in leaps and bounds when you connect with a large group of like-minded souls the energy between us all the love that deep-seated feeling of wellness and connection you're not alone you're here for a reason nothing's a coincidence like it just all clicks and becomes this most beautiful experience i hope for any of you that are remotely called to do this that you will seek these people out this organization out this love out cuz it's there for you it's that easy i went to their two day event this last weekend and it's just been such a phenomenal growth in my path i felt like It's exactly what I've been asking for. Um, I had this amazing ability to really, truly come inside myself, listen. So easy. I've been quote trying for years, but I think that was part of the problem. I was trying too hard, and um, when they mentioned just without effort, it almost gave me the permission to just literally. feel and drop in and allow allow whatever was coming up and in their meditations and in their deep energetic work i felt so much that it was it was shocking to me and i've been able to continue throughout the last few days since the event and i'm just i'm just so grateful um i'm currently in some challenging times and i feel like that was the missing piece. I've been trying to do it from my mind and not knowing how to really deeply go into my body and feel and heal. And that process was unleashed during this event and I'm continuing it and I'm just I'm so amazed at how easy and how effortless it really is. Been on a path of embodiment for many years. Um lots of self-awareness and personal growth but It's like that wasn't enough. I felt stuck and I knew and I felt that there was a lot of stuck energy and you know past pain and in my body and I didn't know how to touch it even with all the different modalities I've done. Um this is a missing piece that I've been asking the universe to show me and when the student is ready the teachers appear and that's what has happened and I'm excited. to work with Guy and Alan some more and um I'd encourage anybody who's thinking about this in this work event in the future to consider it um because it's really powerful powerful deep transformational work thank you i just experienced the second two day intensive with Guy and Alan and Satori Prime and it's overwhelming um the number one thing is the support two and i said this on day 1 of the two day the abundance of honesty that comes out of this work is in and of itself medicine honest with yourself honest with listening to other people and their stories not taking it in to a point where it affects you but taking it into a point where it allows you to feel and to move through it with them and within yourself and that's what this program does i at least it has for me and to feel all of the feels and to not be afraid of them and to have the support when you want to turn around and walk away they say no you don't have to they don't tell you you can't but they tell you you don't have to 
and in doing so, it opens up so much more. The field of energy that was coming through on day two was so overwhelming that when my other half walked in to give me some news regarding one of my stressors, I didn't see him. I saw the energy and I saw the emotion and I felt it and I knew it and I was so protected and so safe that that moment alone was worth all the weight in gold. This is a, a powerful thing. I can see it changing my life in good ways, in ways that I still question and in ways that I want to still question. Thank you to the entire Satori Prime family. Thank you. I'm better today than I was yesterday. I was better yesterday than I was two months ago when I signed up for round one. And I can't wait to see where this journey takes me and us together, because I know that we're gonna be better a month from now, a year from now, because we're doing the work. So, thank you. Mwah. So I've been trying to find what happened to me that day, and the no traumatic experiences just kept happening to me. And it felt like each one, the next would be more extreme than the last. Um, it didn't matter how many books I read, how much I prayed, how much I meditated. I went to counseling. I still am in counseling. I've been going to counseling my whole life. Um, I had a life coach. I'm actually training to become a life coach as well. Working out, vision boards, affirmations, you name it, I did it. I wanted to know all about it, but it didn't help me stop my cycles. In that second meditation, I've come to aware that I took all of those moments for granted. Um, and that was sad, and it was probably a really big disappointment to look at myself like that, that I have all of these beautiful days that I'm wasting, and I could be present for them all, not only for myself, but for for a lot of people out there. Sorry. No, I'm not actually. <laughs> supposed to do that. I'm going to allow that in. Every experience can be different. It truly was a pivotal moment for me of where there was before this experience and after it. And I know that it's only catapulted me to only further my growth. And that to me is something that I can't, I can't think enough and I can't be more grateful for. Um, so if you guys are wanting to do this experience, I encourage it. Um, I encourage you to do as many experiences as you can because it's it's life changing and it's amazing. And I I can't thank enough everyone, even for the many groups and everything after it that they provide is support with like-minded individuals that I honestly I I'm I'm so filled with happiness and so much gratefulness in my heart that there's no dictionary to describe this kind of stuff, but I hope that I was able to, you know, put it into a little part of um, a testimony for you guys and explaining it as the best I could. I love you all. It's been uh, a wonderful two days, emotional, and I just had to take a couple days to process it all because it just seemed but it was very, very um, intense and it was a wonderful journey to be on, that's for sure. There's two reasons for me that, that hurdles that I kind of had to take. Um, excuses, right? We make up excuses um, for ourselves and um, whatever they are, I don't have the money, I don't have the time, um, it's not the right time for me or I can do it on my own, whatever. 
uh, you have those excuses and you go back and forth in your own head. And um, the other thing was that I, I thought I could do it alone. That I needed, what I really needed was I needed help. And I, I actually came face to face with that. And so those two kind of things came to a head. Plus talking to Nikki and Corey, I decided what, what can I lose really, right? So you go back and forth in your own mind and at least I do talk to myself too much. <laughs> so I took the, faith, the leap of faith and I went and I took the, cor the two day course and I am so proud and happy for myself that I did. Um, it took me, like I said, a couple days to process it all because it was so intense and um, just the collective. It's, a, it's such a safe, um, loving, um, protected place to be. You don't have to be afraid. And if you're we're on the fence walk, going back and forth like I was, I recommend that you just just do it. It's a gift for yourself. The support, the love, that's exactly what I needed. I needed to have someone to tell me that, you know, I'm worth it and that I'm not alone, that there's other people out there on the same journey has have the same feelings as well. Thank you so much for just being there. It's amazing. Love you. I'm trying to put into words the experience that I had which is actually quite difficult. I went on a journey for the best part of it. Um, Guy and Alan are very, very good at guiding people. And obviously within this event, there was you know around 50 odd people all sharing this experience with me, which created a very powerful um, energy field. And as they were guiding us and they were then uh, to get people to understand and help you understand uh, certain aspects of yourself we are multi-dimensional beings um we live in multiple realities at the same time and i think what happens is we get pulled into this reality you know as, as beautiful as it is well through our senses um and that isn't every reality there is lots of other areas that for us to explore and guy and Alan are very good at guiding you to open up these different pathways, these different uh, realities. So for me personally, deeply connected to the earth, I felt almost just part of the energy field of the earth at times. I was connected to what I can only describe as beings of light, um, which were coming to visit me. Um, you know, even maybe ancestral parts of my ancestry. And uh, that was very a very powerful experience. And even beyond that, you know, I was viewing the Earth from the Moon. Um, there was a lot of a lot of visuals for me, um, and I found it very very powerful to hear everyone else's story as well and every everyone else's experience. Should I say? Um, you know, there was a lot of people. They were opening up parts of themselves that maybe hadn't been open for a very long time, and there was a lot of healing going on. And I found that absolutely amazing. I think for me personally, what I can bring from and what I've experienced and what Guy and Alan really help with is we have a very busy reality. You know, we live very, very fast lives. Um, we, have, we have been conditioned or we've conditioned ourselves to live like this. Everything moves at quite a, quite a fast pace, including our thoughts now. Um, I don't think it's always been like this, in fact, I know it hasn't always been like this. And so what this really helps you do is just take in the, the stillness of everything. And it allows you to really sink in and just allow that stillness to be. And that is by far the most powerful thing I took from this experience. And I think many others would do as well. And if you haven't been on it, I would definitely recommend going on it, 100%. Like I say, it's hard to put into words the experience. So I didn't know what to expect from the two-day Intuitive Mind event. And um, honestly, I was a little bit anxious about spending that much uninterrupted time just focused on me. Um, but I'm so glad that I followed my intuition and participated because it far exceeded any expectations that I could have conceived before. Um, not only was the event itself 
powerful and transformative, but now it's four days later and I have received daily more downloads, information, um, just insights that have been really special. There's been a new level of calm and peace and just trust in my body system since the event and that alone is priceless. I can't wait for more events. I think Guy and Elon are so knowledgeable and supportive and um, you know, I can't wait to continue this beautiful journey with you. Thank you so much for the work that you do. I love you um, and you're really making the world a better place. So thank you. I, I pondered over doing this, trying to work out how do I explain what just happened. The, the first thing, I guess for me, uh, a lot of the energy workshops I've done uh, is generally with women. It's generally, uh, it's not unheard of that I go to events and there's me and 19 other women at these events, held space by women. I just seem to be more attracted to, I guess, the feminine, if you want to, if you need a word. Um, or there's just not a lot of men going to these type of workshops. Uh, I never knew, I just go along. These two ha have cultivated within themselves the ability to hold gentle loving space um, and from from a big hearted man like me that to me is priceless in itself there's a there's a little bit of a a finding home and for a weekend where i did fuck all there was just space just To feel the transformation on the spot of people in the group from an energetic perspective, not from the words that they spoke perspective, I loved. What brought me to the event was just a, I'd only followed these guys, I stumbled across them, I've only followed them for a couple of months. Um, and just went, well, oh, that feels all right, I'm not going to do that. Did I have some resistance after that decision? Of course, that's, I did. You know, what am I doing? A couple of fucking randoms on the internet, shit. Um, I have a little gullible piece, so I, you know, I'm very wary of being taken advantage of. Yeah, so for, for you, it's a feeling. It's a feeling. It's not an intellectual decision. If you're making an intellectual decision, it might not be right for you. There is changes that are possible. You just need to put your hand up. I've been on my self-development journey for five years now and I have always had problems to sustain the energy in my body due to physical pains that I have. And these pains, they, they like feed the blockages that I have in my body. So um, falling into mind and stress and self-sabotage over and over again, um, yeah, for me it's just inevitable because I never really could hold that, um, that um, foundation inside, you know, that was missing for me. And uh, when I heard that Guy and Elan uh, had a live event coming up and um, somebody invited me uh, if I wouldn't like to join because that was exactly what I was looking for, to get unstuck in my energy and unstuck in self-sabotaging myself. So my mind went a bit awire because I had a work weekend uh, that weekend and I didn't really have the financial means to join. So uh, I thought it over and I went to my boss and I was able to switch my work weekend around and I lent the money from my husband and um, yeah, I could attain, uh, attend. So because I knew not not going was, you know, just something when it feels right, you've got to, you've just got to get that. And that's what, uh, what that event was for me. And uh, during this event, what happened for me was, um, I've never felt something like that before. Nearly at the end of the event, when we were invited to join an exercise, it just released a, a wave of ugliness and shame inside myself that flooded out me. I could see and feel all that, that blame, I, everything just flooded out. And what I realized was that I just forgave myself and I didn't know that that was a work that I still needed to do. And when that happened, um, it was as if my solar plexus just opened up when all that wave of ugliness and shame went outside my body. I can't explain it any, um, any otherwise. And I couldn't grasp these feelings that happened over the two days, but it, it was as if my body and soul were getting ready to release all that. So I didn't understand it. 
but my body already and my soul knew what was happening to me. And um, it was just amazing that everything inside myself knew that I couldn't carry those and handle those feelings anymore. So at the end of that exercise, everything that blocked me was just gone. And it was always as if my solar plexus was pushing me down. And now it is as if I have a strong person inside myself, like the strong energy that that opens up. I, I don't know how to explain that. And it's just a feeling like, oh God, um, even just expressing my, my, my feelings on camera like this or being vulnerable, um, it's just nothing that I've ever done. So this is really new to me and it's, it's um, I'm, I'm nervous, but it's, it's already, it's also exciting to just be able to do this and, and not hide underneath my, my stomach anymore and just being pushed away. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, and these are really exercises and tools that a guy uses, that guy uses that everybody can learn. So I think it's always been so overcomplicated to, to get in touch with your feeling inside that a lot of people are afraid to do that. And uh, I just went in open-minded and it's, I just believe everything is possible now. You know, it's just, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. It's really fantastic. I've never felt more like myself than I do today. So really, I appreciate you guys, Elan. Thank you so much for the work that you two are doing with this beautiful community. And I just can't wait for the next live event to happen. So until we see each other again, all the best to you. And thank you, thank you very, very much for just setting me free and yeah, just making me smile the whole day. It's, it's fantastic. Thank you. I walked in with an open mind and um, what I walked out with was a lot more than that. I walked out with an open heart, an open mind and a whole new experience and it was so worth it. A life changing experience, I could call it that. I've never felt that way before. I have read many books, I have taken some courses. I have been working on my personal development and uh, I found uh, the weekend has uh, changed me forever. Uh, I felt at peace, I felt secure, I felt safe, I felt loved and I felt completely tranquil and it's still. And it was an amazing, amazing, amazing experience, uh, providing a very safe, comfortable, loving, supportive environment. They constantly reassured us. They were there to support us. And uh, we could feel that. And I thank you, thank them so much for that. I felt like I was flying high that day. Uh, the, the point that I had reached through those two days in my experience, in my meditations, I have never reached that level before. Also, the people that attended in the group, everyone was amazing. Such great experiences, uh, gave you so much perspective, insights on what everyone is experiencing and how we can, you know, help support each other, learn from each other, and also build friendships uh, in the Facebook group that we have. Uh, that is a wonderful thing. Um, I'm checking it every day and uh, it's, it's just amazing the amount of beautiful souls out there and I highly recommend this and I hope, and, uh, hope you to come and join our live experience once again and, and see what it's all about and you too will see that it is life-changing and I thank you all, and I hope to see you there.